Now, it's my very special privilege to introduce today's keynote speaker, Professor the Honorable Justice Kemal Bukhari. Pablo Picasso, Picasso once said, the famous uh, painter once said, art is the elimination of the unnecessary. And if I was really an arty person, I would not say a word about Justice Bukhari as he is so well known uh, that an introduction uh, appears completely redundant um, indeed. Justice Bukhari has had an extremely distinguished professional career in Hong Kong, culminating in his appointment as one of the founding members of Hong Kong's Court of Final Appeal. Until his retirement from the CFA in 2012, he was the longest serving CFA member, and he has continued as a non-permanent CFA judge since then. Justice Bukhari um, is highly respected by the legal profession in Hong Kong and overseas, um, and of course also by the wider community. And there are hardly any words to describe his contribution, his contributions to Hong Kong's legal system and uh, to the rule of law in Hong Kong. Here at CHK Law, we are particularly fond of the support Justice Bukhari has granted us since the establishment of the faculty. He is an honorary professor at CHK Law. He also serves as the chair of the faculty advisory board, and he's done so since its establishment. Uh, and he is also the chair of the PCLL academic board, but it would be completely wrong to reduce Justice Bukhari's contributions to CHK Law uh, to, these, to his official functions. In fact, he has helped us in so many unofficial ways by generously uh, devoting his time, making his broad knowledge and experience, as well as his great uh, sense for practical solutions available to us. And um, as appreciated by everybody, he has always done this with his very special sense of humor. Of course, Justice Bukhari is also a brilliant speaker. And we are all the more grateful that he will honor us today with his keynote remarks to set the scenes for our conference on torts law reform in Asia and beyond. Justice Bukhari, uh, please, the virtual floor is yours. Comparative law is a highly beneficial thing. There are many uh, ways in which to pursue it. An international conference is one way. It is probably the best way. Every common law jurisdiction has developed its own common law, but the common law of England is, as Mr. Justice Story said in the United States and Watson, the grand reservoir of all our jurisprudence. So our shared history in the law of tort begins in the 12th century with the advent of the tort of detinue, one of the oldest actions at common law. The first uh, reported tort decision appears to be that of the Court of King's Bench in the case of Thorns, decided in the 15th century. There, uh, the plaintiff succeeded in the tort of Quarry Clausum Fragit against a neighbor who had trampled on the plaintiff's crops while collecting thorns, which the neighbor had cut which had fallen on the plaintiff's land. Defining your terms is always a desirable start, but a common failing of definitions is that of being accurate uh, without being particularly illuminating. Uh, consider this statement, 
those civil rights of action which are available for the recovery of unliquidated damages by persons who have sustained injury or loss, and where there's no actual injury or loss, some of their rights protected by law have been violated by acts or omission statements of others in breach of a duty or contravention of a right imposed or conferred by law rather than by agreement, are rights of action in tort. Uh, this attempted uh, uh, definition of tort, uh, which is not free from the common failing uh, to which I've referred, uh, appears in the tort volume of Halsbury's Laws of Hong Kong. And since I chair the uh, editorial advisory board of that series, I accept responsibility. When delivering his celebrated lectures on the common law, the future Miss Justice Holmes openly accepted that tort can do no more than lay down rules for determining the conduct which will be followed by liability if it is followed by harm. None of this is to say that we lawyers do not understand each other when we say tort. We do. But that is not enough. The rule of law requires that the law be intelligible uh, to the general public. St. Thomas More said in Utopia that if laws are not clear, they are useless. Perfect clarity is a utopian ideal. In the real world, we aim for at least reasonable clarity. Now suppose a member of the general public asks, what is a tort? We could answer by way of illustration. That might be done along these lines. Well, there are many different torts. If, for example, you were crossing the road and a motorist carelessly ran you down and injured you, you could sue him the tort of negligence for compensation, uh, which his insurance will pay. Or suppose your neighbor keeps making noise in his home, depriving you of peace and quiet in yours. Then you could sue him the tort of nuisance for an order stopping him and an award of compensation. If, to take another example, a newspaper published or an internet service provider uploaded untrue things harming your good name, then you might be in a position to sue them in the tort of defamation for compensation and an order preventing repetition. Now, having told uh, our question of that, we might add something uh, like this. Uh, those are just some examples. Other examples are the specific economic torts of conspiracy, intimidation, injurious falsehood, deceit, interference with contractual relations, unfair competition, passing off, and unwarranted disclosure of confidential information. Their names give you a clue as to their nature. These specific economic torts, or some of them, come under the umbrella of a general economic tort of interference with uh, business uh, by unlawful means. By now, the questioner will have a general idea of what tort is about. Law needs continuity and updating. Thus, uh, the case of O, a child against Rhodes, uh, set the present scope of the tort originating in the 19th century of intentionally causing physical or psychological harm. Now, of the flaws in uh, tort at common law, the two worst 
well, I think, one, the rule that contributory negligence uh, barred claims in negligence altogether. And two, the doctrine of common employment. Both have long been abolished by legislation of judicial developments in tort law, I consider the one in Donahue and Stevenson the best. The development of a tort of uh, misuse of private information to protect personal privacy merits an honorable mention. So do developments on vicarious liability, uh, providing tort victims with recourse against persons who are able to satisfy awards and can justly uh, be required to do so. 20 years ago, in the Ritz-Carlton Hotel case, uh, we applied close connection as a basic criterion uh, for imposing vicarious liability. The United Kingdom Supreme Court also applies uh, that criterion. Uh, most recently, I think two years ago in the Morrison's supermarkets case. Leaving aside vicarious liability, a parent company may be found to have so intervened in the management of its subsidiaries' operations as to have assumed a duty itself of care towards those harmed by negligence in the carrying out of those operations. The United Kingdom Supreme Court said so in the recent case of Lungawi against the Danta resources. Judicial developments in tort are sometimes by turns of 180 degrees. The advocate's immunity created on public policy grounds by the House of Lords in Rondell and Worsley was removed by their lordships 33 years later in Arthur J's Hall against Simmons as no longer in the public interest. Sometimes the court extend the law. Uh, at other times, for instance, in Royal Bank of Scotland against JP SBC 4, uh, decided by the Privy Council yesterday, uh, they declined to. Appeasement, justice deterrence and compensation were identified by Professor Glanville Williams as tort's purposes. Great judges have spoken in great cases of the vindicatory and deterrent dimensions of tort damages. As Sir William Blackstone's discussion of private wrongs shows, the history of tort at common law spans a long and broad swathe. More than 300 years before the trail smelter awards on environmental protection under international law, the Court of King's Bench had held in Aldred's case that a person adversely affected by the offensive smell of his neighbor's pigsty could sue in the tort of nuisance at, at common law. Professor F.H. Lawson has detected the influence of customary law, Roman law, and natural law on the development of delictal responsibility, which can, I suppose, be said to be the civil law equivalent of tortious liability, such as we know at common law. Whatever the system 
uh, this area of law is holistic and fertile. Tort often serves more than one purpose at the same time. Milton contended Aeropagitica for liberty to know, to utter, and to argue freely according to conscience. In Chang and Jie, we improve the balance between the right to reputation and those liberties identified so long ago by that great thinker. We recognize the defense of foyer comment and reconfigured it. So honesty of belief is the touchstone. Consequently, the defense is not defeated by actuation by spite, animosity, intent to injure, intent to arouse controversy, or other motivation. James Fitzjames Stephen, a later Mr. Justice Stephen, said that analysis without history is blind. Determining the law's present state may involve examining its previous state. In order to know what the law is, Mr. Justice Holmes said, we must know what it has been and what it tends to become. I would add that the law's past and present informs its future. I thank you for your patience and our hosts for this opportunity uh, to address you, which I esteem and honor. With your permission, I thank them on your behalf, as well as on my own behalf, for organizing this event. Uh, so wonderfully well. We are a diverse group. Awareness of diversity is, as Dean Wolf has pointed out in a recent book of his, conducive to synergy. We have now met remotely. Let us hope to meet in person someday soon. We have looked at history. Uh, that is not living in the past. A philosopher said that although life can only be understood backwards, it must be lived forwards. So too the law. I hope to leave the law uh, better than I found it. Uh, beyond that, I entrust further improvements to others, above all to my grandchildren. Thank you very much, Justice Bokhari. This was uh, excellent. Uh, I'm glad, um, actually I knew that I didn't promise too much. This was a brilliant introduction to Todd's Law, the history, the present state and um, future, um, well, hopes for the future, actually, as you put it. Um, I particularly liked your quote, the Thomas Wolfe quote, that law must be clear. And I think that this is something which nowadays often gets forgotten and uh, which we have to remember when um, addressing those issues. Obviously, I don't want to disagree with you, but I think the best quote was the quote of you. <laughs> All right, many thanks again. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, as you said, hopefully um, we will all be able to meet in person uh, soon again.